I'm Carl Napakoski. I'm a dramatic pathologist out here in uh, Naperville, Illinois, and I'm here with uh, Patrick Emanuel, who's um, a dramatic pathologist and originally from New Zealand, and he's practiced in New York at Mount Sinai Hospital at the University of Auckland in New Zealand, and now he's in Lima, Peru. And uh, he's got uh, he's been out in practice for 13 years or so, and uh, he has a special interest in non-melanoma skin cancers. So. So, uh, Patrick, I'm I'm, in, I'm curious, like, how did you uh, get interested in, in non and particularly high risk non melanoma skin cancer? Uh, well, I mean, you know, I've, I, it, as you point out, I've worked in various countries, and um, the thing about um, non melanoma skin cancers is that uh, they're sort of an unrecognized uh, group, or well, they're underappreciated, in my point of view, uh, and particularly in New Zealand, some of these tumors. Um, behaved in a very aggressive uh, manner and so that sort of piqued my interest, the fact that first of all no one was um, recording um, the statistics of, of these tumours uh, and, 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 and second of all, you know, some of these, pa these patients do very badly when they actually metastasize, yeah. um, the prognosis is, is appalling. Uh, and in the United States, you don't see that many cases of this, but in New Zealand we used to see it quite regularly, yeah. so that sort of piqued my interest. Yeah, for sure. So I'm curious about Lima. Now, you're there now. Um, what? How does that compare with your time in New York and your time in New Zealand? Well, every 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 country is different. Yeah. Um, Peru, we we have different challenges. Uh, the UV index is is also very high. Yeah. Uh, but the population is, is is not a population like we have in New Zealand, where you know there's a lot of people with Irish or Scottish ancestry. Uh, so we see more infections, and we, but we do still see the occasional, you know, um, highly aggressive non-melanoma skin cancers in, in, in Peru as well. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Um, <clears throat> so being from uh, New Zealand, I don't know. I think a lot of us uh, think about like that area of the country as having being the home to a lot of giants in dramatic pathology. Um, I'm curious about the people that influenced your career in general, people you mentors, people you look up to. Yeah, well, I mean, I did all my training in uh, New York City, okay. and um, my mentor was a guy called Robert Phelps, and um, I was basically with him for eight years, and he was, uh, you know, so I was kind of like a fellow for eight years, wow. you know, as a, as, a, uh, as a resident, and then as a fellow, it was a two-year fellowship, and then I was there as faculty as well, so um, he was very instrumental in my career. I mean, yeah. I used to go to work before six o'clock in the morning and put the slides, you know, in, in order and everything. Yeah. Uh, and so he, he taught me an enormous amount. Yeah. Um, and then going back to uh, Australasia, there was, as you say, some giants. Um, and David Whedon was, you know, a, a very good referral base. I used to send cases to him. And a guy called Stephen Cossard as well, who's, who, who's been very... Uh, important in, um, in, in sort of uh, understanding some of these higher risk squamous cell carcinomas okay. in Australia. So yeah, I mean mentorship is very important and I, and I think that uh, I was very lucky to have uh, such a good crew at Mount Sinai in New York and uh, in particular Robert Phelps, my, my mentor. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so you're you're 13 years out but I mean you're, you're still a young guy, young physician so I'm curious about like, you know, being there, but also being somebody who's sort of like rising and somebody who's, you know, well known in the society. Like, do you, what kind of advice do you have for for those of us, the other people who are sort of younger <laughs> in practice or early well, on? Well, I don't know. Careers? I think it, I think we're very. Uh, the bottom line is, I think we're very lucky to do a job that's so interesting. You know, in medicine, I think, um, you know, if you enjoy your job and and you find that uh, you find that it's an interesting field, then I think we're we're privileged, and, and mm. most of the time, I mean, day to day, I mean, you know, you have your good days and your bad days, but, um, you know, I feel very privileged to be doing this job. Um, there's so much to be teased out, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that we've still got to learn um, in, in, in dermatology and dermatopathology, um, and, and I, you know, I feel really privileged that we're, we're sort of on the cutting edge of, of learning a lot of new things. Yeah. We've, I mean, you just have to take a, you know, melanoma in the, in the last few years has completely changed, hasn't it, Melan melanocytic yeah. lesions. And we're probably seeing um, similar changes in, in Merkel cell carcinoma. We've learned a lot about Merkel cell carcinoma recently. And I think the next stage is probably going to be squamous cell carcinoma of the skin too. Yeah. Uh, squamous and, and, and basal cell carcinomas of the skin. Some of them that behave very badly, we don't really understand 
yeah. you, know, uh, you know, too much about why they do badly. You know, you see squamous cell carcinomas in other parts of the body, you know, you see a squamous cell carcinoma of the lung, right. you know that it's going to get the terrible prognosis. But when we see a squamous cell carcinoma in the skin, you think, oh, that's not so bad. But then some of them do behave badly. Yeah. And how do we tease out which ones are good, which ones are bad? Yeah. Yeah. So I think so, it's an exciting time. Yeah, it definitely is an exciting time for, for progress in dermatopathology. I'm curious about, um, you know, as you're talking, like, do you have any specific, like, uh, examples of cases that, like, stick with you? Uh, particularly in the, this area of aggressive squamous cell carcinoma and basal cell carcinoma. Yeah, I mean, I had someone to close, to, but personally, someone close to me who was, uh, you know, he, he uh, uh, in his early 40s, developed a squamous cell carcinoma on his nose, and it actually ended up being a fatal case. You know, yeah. those kind of cases stick with you. Um, yeah. uh, you know, um, and I remember in New York, the, the chairman of uh, dermatology said he never saw a squamous or carcinoma of the skin behaving badly in somebody who wasn't immunosuppressed. But in, in other parts of the world, that does happen frequently. Yeah. And so that, I think that case where, you know, this person that I knew, mm -hmm. uh, this fatal case, it really it, it drilled home that this is, this is a serious condition and, yeah. and uh, we don't record it. The, the cancer registries don't record the statistics. Um, but actually, you know, we, we do need to do a better job in, uh, in, in, in trying to figure out which one of these, one, which one of these cancers are going to do badly. Yeah, I agree. Um, on that note, I feel like one of the things that's interesting is, and I, um, you know, they're, they're, we've been talking a lot at this meeting about some of the changes in staging in melanoma, but there were changes that affected uh, cutaneous squamous cell carcinoma as well. I'm curious what, in light of your interest, like what you think about those changes. Yeah, well, it's an, it's an interesting change. The AGCC's made a, you know, a dramatic change in the staging criteria. It was quite comprehensive before, and, and now a lot of the metrics are actually clinical. Yeah. So the size of the tumour um, is probably the most important thing. <coughs> and, um, you know, as a pathologist, uh, it, it's a little bit disappointing because, you know, that, I mean, we can recognise features down the microscope that uh, certainly um, would indicate this is a a, you know, a more aggressive tumour that we can't actually report with the current AJCC staging yeah. uh, protocol. The, the previous one had some problems too because, you know, there was, um, a, you know, a high risk lesion was Clark's level 4 or higher than 2 millimetres in thickness, which right. is actually very common for squamous cell carcinoma, as you know. Yeah. And so I think a lot of these cases were put in the high risk category when in actual fact they probably weren't that high risk. Mm -hmm. And so we've gone from that to a, to a staging system that actually, you know, it's, I think we're missing a lot of high-risk tumours. Yeah. No, probably, they're probably not putting it in a, in a, in a high-risk uh, stage. Yeah. And so it's not, it's not very, I, I'm sure you found the same thing yourself in your practice, but uh, the yeah. clinician's not very happy with that. No, I agree with you. That's <laughs> where I hear most, from most, is that these don't seem like they're adequately staged and we're not yeah. able to parse them out adequately. Yeah. Um, all right, uh, I, I'm, you know, I, I feel like um, I really have to ask you about this too. So <laughs> there's this website, uh, DermNet NZ, and uh, you know, New Zealand. I, I know you're involved with it. Yeah, I know right. Yeah. It's one of these things that, like, if you Google something, like you're that, you know, dermatopathology-wise, you're bound to hit it. And you know, I sort of think that you see pictures from the website and PowerPoints all the time. Yes. So I'm curious about your involvement and what you think about that project or. Oh, no, it's a great resource, I think. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to be the editor of the dermatopathology section of that um, website. And, no, it's a great resource. Um, and, you know, it's a, a testament to the work of a few of my colleagues. But, um, you know, in New Zealand, we, we see all sorts of, we, you know, it, it, the case base is just completely different. And um, we see all sorts of uh, unusual tumours. Um, and the website... It, it, it's an e excellent resource for people in New Zealand and around the world. I think it's surprising to most people that it's become so popular internationally. Yeah. Um, yeah. But um, it's one of these things. That there's sort of no competition. It's just it's just an open source sort of uh, resource, a little bit like Wikipedia, yeah. but uh, right. for, for for skin for skin lesions or s skin diseases. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's great. I know I've used it myself. All right, Patrick, um, thank you for spending time with us and sharing your thoughts uh, on this. And um, yeah. Oh, no, it's a real pleasure. Thanks so much. It's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah.